It's Nolan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I gotta make it out now. Yeah. Since a teen, every one of my family they gave a dream. Tryna make it, I gotta go get the green. Everything that they capture ain't what it seems. I've been fighting the battle, I wanna scream, but I need to be strong. Saving my city and home, I can't ever leave them alone. My homies been dying, mother been crying. With every event, they be hitting my line, been swiping my car, praying to God that I'm able to help and it doesn't decline. I get no rest, I can't even recline. Got things on my chest, even more on my mind. I'm doing my best and I'm still on the ground. We chasing success, we gon' come in time. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. That intro song y'all heard is called Make It Out. It's by your boy Jay Nolan. And of course, since we talking about little baby today, I said, man, let me show you, let me play a little song of me, you know, doing a little little baby impression. You know what I'm saying? This is a song actually that I made uh for one of my licensing opportunities because they were looking for authentic Atlanta. Little baby is style music so that's not something that's going to come out on my own projects or anything like that because of course it's too inspired by him that ain't even my style but that just let y'all know y'all boy <laughs> nigga i told y'all i'll be behind the sheets anyway today we're going to be getting into little baby getting arrested in vegas and uh footage of his arrest has been released by tmz so we're going to be checking that out we're going to be getting into Megan Thee Stallion and her new uh, rumored NBA boo. Interesting. Uh, maybe she's off the market. Okay. Hey, mate. If you like it, I love it. And then the last thing we're going to get into on this show is Lil Rod speaking on Diddy once and for all. He's got a new interview out with Rolling Stone where it's supposed to be a tell-all interview. So we're going to dig into what it is that Lil Rod has to say in that particular publication. Uh, if there's anything new of note to be discovered about the situation, et cetera, et cetera. All right. But first, let's just start it off with Lil Baby, shall we? So apparently Lil Baby was in Vegas and I guess he's out there. Uh, for James Harden's birthday. And for whatever reason, Lil Baby was out in Vegas with a gun, which he claims he it was his legal right to have it. But you know, I don't I don't know how that works. I don't know how all of the uh the gun laws work. I always thought if you were just registered and one particular state that don't mean that you could carry your weapons everywhere. But again, I don't know how all that shit works down to the logistics. Nonetheless, he's caught on camera. He's berating. I wouldn't say berating cops, but definitely uh, trying to speak his way out of the situation. Um, And they say he was in possession of an illegal weapon. 
An eyewitness told TMZ that a squadron of police rolled into the Encore Las Vegas on Monday night and came out with him in handcuffs. So who who tipped them off that he had this firearm? As Vegas Metro PD officers were patting the rapper down near a police vehicle behind the hotel, Lil Baby shouted he has a license for the gun and employed officers, excuse me, implored officers to let him go. Unfortunately, the police weren't having it and Lil Baby got more frustrated and began talking smack. At one point, taunting officers that they should check him thoroughly because he had the gun in his nuts. No code switching here. He was eventually led to the police truck hauled off to the Clark County Detention Center and was released after posting $5,000 bail, which is nothing to Lil Baby, despite the fact that he hasn't really been, uh, you know, in the conversation as far as male rappers this year or for the last year, for that matter. Shortly after this arrest, law enforcement sources told TMZ that he was caught on video being passed a gun at Vegas Encore. Okay, so he was caught on video Somebody passed him a firearm inside this club and they were alerted about this. OK, I was trying to understand how who gave the tip. Cops arrived, investigated and arrested him for allegedly carrying a concealed firearm without a permit. They say Nevada does not recognize concealed carry permits from Georgia. Uh, uh, is that a felony in Nevada? Like how, how do y'all determine you know, what what uh, charges are brought on from that. I don't know. I guess we'll get a, get an update soon. But here's the video of Lil Baby. I don't know why. Maybe he was drunk, you know, but uh, he definitely didn't go down too easy. Now, look, man, I don't purport myself to be no street nigga by no stretch of the imagination. I'm just trying to understand why Lil Baby was so adamant about them checking his nuts. I don't know if he wanted, you know, it's been a while since he got a physical and he wanted to cough while they cupped on his nuts. I don't know if he wanted, you know, them to reach in his pants and for the police to look down. And when they look up, he was going to be holding his hand like this. <laughs> gotcha. I don't know what the <laughs> I don't know what the hell little baby got going on. But the fact that you were out there for little uh excuse me, not little, that you were out there for uh James Harden birthday and you was finna go somewhere else for James Harden birthday, you know, people be saying, people be talking about you and James Harden, bro. I ain't trying to put nothing on you. But wow. But again, I ain't no street nigga, you know what I'm saying? So if that's customary for y'all to like want the cops to like grab your nuts, I'll leave it alone. 
know what I'm saying? Because clearly it's out of my jurisdiction to even speak on. <laughs> and I will leave it alone for the rest of my life. Okay. But he's out. He's free. I'm sure he'll have to report back for court or some shit, pay some fines, whatever. He'll move on with life. That was bizarre, though. Shit. Moving on with the show. Megan Thee Stallion and her rumored NBA boyfriend. Now, that's interesting to me. Now, of course, on the Megan album, she did say she's done fucking rap niggas where them athletes at. Seems that she's made good on that promise, on that lyric. Because now she's been seen with NBA player uh, Tori Craig. Okay. Now, they posted a TikTok challenge where they basically, y'all know the challenge where it's like, who does this the most? Who does this? Who does this? And you point or whatever. Cool, whatever. But this is the first time that we've publicly seen, or at least to my knowledge, that we've publicly seen her with this gentleman. Tory Craig is not like a famous NBA player. He's not a starter. He's not a primetime athlete or anything like that. Excuse me. But he does play for the Chicago Bulls, which I find very interesting because she's uh, she did spend quite a bit of time in Chicago during her tour uh, out there with Angel Reese, who plays for the Chicago Sky. You know, so, hey, shit, what? Megan got allies in the shot. Like, shit, I, I could go see Angel, go pull up on Tory Craig. That is an interesting name, Tory Craig. But you got you. But out of everybody who got two first names. You got a hell of five two first names, but you got hey, you got a hell of five woman on your side. Shit, but God bless. Now, <laughs> since all this has became chatter, the post is now deleted, it's taken down. But let's just go ahead and take a gander at what was available earlier. Okay. Most likely challenge couples edition. Who's most likely to get arrested? <laughs> Who's the better kisser? Who said I love you first? Who starts the most arguments? <laughs> Who needs the most attention? Come on. Who's the better cook? Who's the most spoiled? <laughs> Who's the funniest? Who has the better style? <laughs> Who takes longer to get ready? I do. <laughs> Whose mother-in-law likes them more? All right, so there we have it. Soft launch, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Look like they might have been in a, uh, I don't know. Could have been hotel. Could have been anywhere. You know what I'm saying? But it was in some bed, post, chilling, having a good time. So, hey, man, you know, all I can say toward the situation is I hope it goes well. I hope it turns out to be exactly whatever it is that they're going for. Um, if they're going steady, steady, you know what I'm saying? Like, then I hope that it remains steady. You know, I don't know if this is a guy that she sees long term, like on some matrimony type shit. If that's the goal, I hope it goes that way. If this is just somebody she's spending time with and just enjoying it for the moment and it's like, shit, fuck it. I'm going to post this. And if I ain't with the nigga tomorrow, it is what it is. Have at it. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? I just hope it turns out to be exactly Whatever it is that they want. Okay. Because at the end of the day, it ain't got shit to do with me or us. Um, she's having a good time. She said she wanted to find an athlete. She done found one. And for me, if I see somebody of Megan Thee Stallion's caliber and she's messing with an NBA player that's not like a main component of the NBA like you know 
there's certain players that just everybody knows, including the women that don't even watch the games. Like, you know LeBron. You know Steph Curry. You know John Morant. You might know Ke Kevin Durant. You know what I'm saying? It's certain people. But this guy, he's been in the league for a while, and he's not well known. So to me, that's, that shows or indicates some level of this could be a genuine thing because she has the pick of the litter from any primetime athlete that she could ever possibly fathom and she ended up landing with this one so i would assume that is pretty genuine and you know we'll just see where it goes we'll see if they continue to pop out together sometimes you gotta pop out and show niggas you know we'll see i'm wishing her all the best you know she has her um vma hosting coming up very soon you know, maybe he pops out of there, you know what I mean? Walk the red carpet with her, support his lady. You know, maybe they maybe they go official official. That's cool. That's fly. When it comes to matters of the heart, man, I can't I can't tell nobody. You know, I just hope the nigga's a solid dude, you know what I mean, at the end of the day, because I would hate for her to go through anything remotely close to what she's been through, you know what I'm saying? In any of her relationships. But we're going to keep the show rolling because it's not much to be said there. We just wanted to talk about it, speak on it, and keep it moving. This is not going to be a long show because uh, the longest topic we have is going to be this Lil Rod interview speaking on Diddy. So about to pull that article up with Rolling Stone. And let's get to the shits, man. There hasn't been any like super massive updates on this case all year. Ever since the raids happened at Diddy's homes, it's been kind of quiet uh, outside of um, the Cassie footage, which really had nothing to do with this particular lawsuit. That's something that dates back to last year. So let's see what's going on. According to Rolling Stone, they say Diddy producer Lil Raw breaks silence on lawsuit and backlash. He says it's killing me. Let's go. Music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones made global headlines in, Feb in February when he filed a stunningly detailed $30, 30 million SA trafficking and racketeering lawsuit against Diddy in Manhattan federal court. Jones claims the hip hop mogul groped him, secretly drugged him and forced him to solicit and participate in contact with sex workers while Jones was working with Combs on the Grammy nominated Love album Off the Grid between September 2022 in November 2023. The explosive 73 page suit followed after Combs' longtime partner, Cassandra Cassie Ventura, accused him of SA and years of psychological and sexual abuse in a filed complaint from November of uh, 2023. Five more women have since filed lawsuits alleging Combs SA them as far back as the early 90s. He is also a defendant in an SA lawsuit filed against his own son. Christian King Combs. All right. Mr. Jones lawsuit is pure fiction. This is from Diddy's account. What he claims. He says it's a shameless attempt to create media hype and extract a quick settlement. That's what Combs lawyer Erica Wolf said in a statement Monday of this week after filing a new motion to try to get Lil Rod's, uh, Lawsuit thrown out. They say there was no Rico conspiracy and Mr. Jones was not threatened, not groomed, not assaulted, nor trafficked. We look forward to proving this in a court of law that all Mr. Jones claims are made up and must be dismissed. Despite Diddy's denials, Lil Rod, 38, has held firm. As his lawsuit moves ahead, he's speaking out in his first interview. He declined to expand on his most sensitive allegations, saying his complaint speaks for itself, but he was willing to discuss working with Combs and what he describes as a damaging fallout from his blockbuster lawsuit. With his lawyer Tyrone Blackburn on the line, Jones says he's largely been hiding in the last few months while undergoing intensive therapy. He did attend 50 Cent's Humor and Harmony Festival in Louisiana, which was a, a controversial event within itself, as we saw Hurricane Chris 
have some very strong words for 50 about coming into his city without booking him or none of his homeboys. Right? He also recently worked with T Pain at a large Juneteenth show at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles. But in his first major interview since the lawsuit, he says he feels otherwise blackballed from the music industry for stepping forward. Now, here's where we get into the actual interview. They state, or ask, shall I say, before Diddy and the Love album, how did you view your career? He says, I grew up in church. My family consists of pastors, singers, musicians, and carpenters. As a kid at 13 years old, I started doing recordings. Before I knew it, it snatched me right out of school. I've worked with some of the greatest artists across different genres. In the gospel industry, the Clark Sisters, Mary Mary, Donald Lawrence, Smokey Norfolk. In the jazz world, Brian Culberston. In the hip-hop world, Jack Harlow, T-Pain. I'm a singer and rapper who produces and plays multiple instruments. Coming into the situation with Diddy, I put everything else on hold. I saw that doing Diddy's project might be able to give me the finances and position to come back to my production company with a little bit more notoriety. When you work in this type of album, it usually comes with respect. But again, the original issue Rod came out with was financial. And we just heard him say he expected some financial stability from this project, which was immediately revoked. They ask, and when I say they, I mean Rolling Stone. How did you start working on the Love album? He says the first official meeting was in September of 2022. It was a writing camp at Chalice Recording Studio. This is the same studio where someone was allegedly shot by Diddy and his son. And the police came and checked it out. And the blood and stuff was not even clinked up. And they left according to his lawsuit. But anyway, his first uh, meeting was at this particular studio in LA. He says, one of my friends was close to his A&R at Love Records and they asked me to come work with him. He said, they give us our own room with musicians coming through to work with us. When I got there, I was so confused because the parking lot was set up like a club. Puff turned the parking lot into this whole experience. I didn't end up having my own room and was ready to go home, but I figured I'd at least do some networking. There was free drinks, IV drips, massage therapists, basketball, and hundreds of people. So this shit was set up like a house, like a goddamn club party, house party, block party. Not so much of a recording session. He says, at first, I wasn't even noticed. They tried to put me in a corner. I was like, I'm a musician. I got guitars, keyboards, and bass in my trunk. With me sticking around, people just started asking and needing me more. One time specifically, Puff asked, yo, I need you to go find some church musicians to play keys to color up this song. I was sitting right there. I said, I can play it. I grew up playing in the church. We moved to another room and he pulled me to the side and was like, yo, maybe you could put a bridge on this song. You do know what a bridge is. I looked at him like, bro. For him to ask me that, he didn't have the slightest idea of my background. From then on, my services were needed. They gave me the task of training all the engineers and dealing with all the producers. <clears throat> so he's basically setting the, setting the stage on how he met Diddy. An A&R from Diddy's Love Records said, yo, come to the studio, come fuck with us. Apparently the A&R knew he, who he was, but Diddy was never aware of, of homie. He wasn't debriefed on you know, him coming or to expect him. So he walked into this thinking that he was going to be in an isolated room working on something specific. And it turned out it was just one giant fucking party, hip hop hooray. Diddy don't even know who the nigga was. So he says, can you find some church musicians? He said, nigga, that's what I am. What the hell? You don't know. And from there, he became very in demand because he was able to play the instrumentation that um, Diddy was looking for. They ask, what is what was it like working with him? He says his attitude is like zero to 100 in seconds. Sometimes he's asking for something and he doesn't even know what he's asking for. He'll be like, yo, turn those little trinkles up. I would just look at him like, OK, the trinkles. Let's see. I just constantly keep eye contact and I could see when I'm turning up something. If it's right, I'd get that nod. I started to develop his ear too. He liked that. 
I understand music theory and professional terms. I had to understand what he's trying to say and translate that. And when you're working as an engineer and you're working with somebody who may not have all the technical terms together, that's a pretty standard situation. He says, that's how we became close. He's not a musician. He's more like an executive. He likes options. I figured, okay, I'm going to add 10 or 20 extra parts on here. And then when he comes in, I'll mute everything and play them one by one. And this will give him a plate to choose from, giving him options. It got to the point that out of all those hundreds of people at the writing sessions, when he went home to Miami, it was only myself and his A&R executive, DeForest Taylor, who flew back with him. So once all of the partying was over, Diddy was beginning to take a liking to Lil Rod because of his technical prowess in the studio. He seemed like somebody he could take under his wing that he could work lockstep with for the uh, development of this album. Rolling Stone says, your lawsuit alleges a pattern of abuse. When did that allegedly start? He says, one of the first moments that was very uncomfortable was around Thanksgiving. Me and DeForest were the only two flown to Miami as Thanksgiving Day, and he has a table outside for the employees. And in Lil Rod's lawsuit, he talks about the fact that he was forced to miss um, major holidays with his family to continue working with Diddy. So this is one of those accounts. It's Thanksgiving Day. He has a table outside for the employees. He's inside. He waves me in. I'm a little nervous, but excited to be brought into the family dinner. I felt privileged to be sitting there. He introduced me and asked me to bless the food because, of course, he is the son of a preacher. So I guess he felt like he was the best person to say the prayer. He says, I'm trying to talk with the people sitting next to me, but I notice everyone is saying very little. I realized they're probably all under NDAs. I don't like to sit uncomfortable too long. So I went to the studio. Interesting. I wonder what automatically triggered him to think NDA. So nobody wants to say nothing of importance because they can't. He says about 10 minutes later, Puff comes rolling in with young Miami and others following behind. Oh, shit. Assistants were lighting candles, giving us cocktails. He went in his bathroom attached to the studio and summoned me and DeForest. He asked me if I had a hundred dollar bill. There were three white lines on the sink. So now at this point, he said, you got a hundred dollar bill, dog. We finna, <laughs> we finna turn up, baby. We finna go see some of that powder keg. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we finna, yeah. Take a trip to Enterprise, not for no rental car. He says uh, he was asking me to do something I've never done before. It was awkward. He was trying to get me to do drugs. I don't want to judge nobody, but that's at the top of my list of things I'm afraid to do. They say, how do you describe Diddy? He says he's a monster. He'll do whatever is necessary to get exactly what he wants. He does not take no for an answer. And we know that from Diddy. He said that on his own TV show. He told me himself, I'll smack my mama. And this was also indicated in the lawsuit when we went through it bar for bar, word for word. So he's just reiterating. Anybody who can say that even jokingly is a monster. He's nothing to be played with for a person whose brand is love records and changed their name to love and named their kid love. He doesn't show love. He's just marketing. They ask, where are you based these days? He says, for safety reasons, I'm not saying so. He will not disclose anything remotely close to uh, pertaining to his location because it's not safe. He says, there's been too many people trying to figure out where I'm at. I've moved locations, moved states. Everything is private. My mother doesn't even know where I live. It's been like that pretty much all year. Rolling Stone asks, how has your battle with Diddy affected your career and personal life? He says, it's been very, very tough. Because of this lawsuit, most people don't want to come near working with me for whatever reason. Whether they've been in a partnership with Puff or... Or they just want to sit back and see what happens. He's a gatekeeper in the music industry. In this industry, to be successful, you have to have worked with someone like him or Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, Kanye, 50 Cent. So many people I've worked with have had business dealings with him. I reached out to try to get a deal for my album and people don't want to get involved. Right. So this is what we're talking about when it comes to the black ball. Right. 
there's certain people in the industry that when you have those close ties, you work closely with them, you have history with them. Moving forward is a little bit easier. It's easier to navigate. But if you're at odds with these people, folks step back because it's like, huh, we got to see how this thing plays out before I fuck with you, homeboy, because you might just be the problem. He says, the crazy part is when you sign most artists, you have to get in the studio and pay producers. My album is finished. So he's looking for a deal for his album, which he completed on his own. It's mixed and mastered. I just need someone to come in and help with marketing and the release. I did the hard part, but people are too scared. Whatever their reasons are to touch this. I've been told the best way to do it is independent. That's a motherfucking fact. He says, but I have no engine. And the fact that you just said that shows me you don't have the drive to make it happen independently. That's too bad. He says, I can't just go back to working with artists as a musician because I have to take security around with me when I'm performing. And most musicians don't get paid enough to take security. They ask, why do you need security? You afraid of Diddy? He says, yes, I've got threats. I've never had so much hitting me at once. Diddy has a lot of people on his payroll in a lot of different positions. He's very connected. It made me nervous traveling, going to hotels. I ask if there's any way to remove my name. The last time I landed in L.A., I knew he had connections there. I got off the plane worried. He says, I masked my face and changed my outfits, trying to disguise myself. For sure, I was uncomfortable, paranoid, afraid. But I told myself, you can't keep living like this. I got three therapists. Okay. And in the article, they state in his lawsuit, Jones alleges Combs threatened him with physical harm. And of course, everybody can see the and, and then. Uh, Lil Rod comes back and says, everybody saw that video of Cassie. This is who I'm dealing with. So he says he's afraid of physical confrontation from Diddy himself, not to mention others in his camp or people that he's associated with that he does not know about. So he walks around in fear, allegedly. Rolling Stone asks him, so you don't tour no more with other artists? He says, I did a gig at the Hollywood Bowl with T-Pain in June. With a full orchestra, I was the band director, scored the orchestra parts, played the keys and bass guitar. I've been working with T-Pain the last couple years, helped produce his last album. But during that show, I had a couple mental breakdowns. I almost felt like it was too soon for me to try to come back outside to work. My anxiety was out the roof. I saw different guys backstage I did not know and got scared. I wondered where the security was. It made me very uncomfortable. It's not a good feeling wondering if someone was there to attack me. It was just hard for me to do my job comfortably. He says, it's definitely been challenging for sure. Last year, I was touring arenas around the U.S. This year, I've only done a total of three gigs. It's hard. This has got me in a place where I don't know what's next. I feel like there's more music and creativity in me, but then I feel like maybe my career is over. Maybe. The music business feels so corrupted. I've been writing. I have a couple albums, but the truth is I'm nervous. They ask, is it an overstatement to say he feels blackballed? He says, no, it's not an overstatement. It's correct. It feels like there's so many people quietly rooting for Diddy. Or maybe they're rooting for me and just scared to say something. Here I am standing up for justice. What I believe in is right for my life. And I'm being punished for that. I'm blackballed for sure. I've had many nights and weeks and months of suicidal thoughts. It's the music that's kept me living. They ask, what do you want people to know about your situation? He says, for some reason... Our culture worships Diddy and his billionaire status. They don't want to see him fall because they're living vicariously through him. They have to understand Puffy is no God. He's nothing more than a shrewd, crooked businessman. He's stolen publishing for years, which you knew before you worked with him. But I, I understand you thought it wouldn't happen to you because a lot of people assume that he would change. He says he's nothing but a thief. He has no soul. He lives off other people's gifts and talents. It's not a human way to live. My name is all over the Love Album credits, so I had to have done some producing. It got a Grammy nomination, and I'm sitting here doing nothing, unable to work. This is not right. In his amended lawsuit, Jones alleges he had a verbal contract with Combs promising him $20,000 and four royalty points per song, as well as credit as a producer credit for each instrument played and publishing rights to his work. He alleges he produced nine songs on the love album and has not been compensated for his work. 
When reached for comment, a spokesperson for Combs said no such agreement was reached, which, of course, how could he ever confirm it if it was verbal? It's tough. They say Mr. Jones was hired as a session musician and sound engineer for the Love album and was fully compensated for his contribution, the unnamed spokesperson says. The rep further pointed out to Rolling Stone, there was a prior statement from Diddy regarding his decision in the last few years to rep- to return publishing rights to his bad boy artists and writers. He says, no other company has taken the steps that I have taken to give back publishing rights to these artists. This is about fairness, integrity, and acknowledging the contributions these artists made to the culture. So when um, Aubrey O'Day said that Diddy was doing that to create some sort of form of goodwill for himself, now we see what that was. So when people start coming out and speaking on him, he could say, hey, but I gave your publishing back. Yeah, you gave niggas they publishing back 20 years after the shit was even valuable. Rolling Stone asks, what is your financial position now? He says, I'm broke. I have no source of income. Every month I'm trying to figure out how the bills are going to get paid. I had my phone turned off for like 24 hours. A lot of people just sit back and watch. But T-Pain is a real friend. So T-Pain is still um, working with him through all of this. He said his team worked to make sure it was safe for me at the Hollywood Bowl show. That felt good. But there should be more artists like T-Pain having my back. They say, what are you hoping for moving forward? He says, I'm hoping once I drop my album that people support it. I hope that people get back to the reality of my music and my talent. Anybody who knows me knows it's real, raw talent. Puffy is the executive producer who has the money. It takes him months sometimes just to cut eight bars. I could pick up a bass right now and play it. I could pick up a keyboard right now and play it. I play 13 instruments, can sing and rap and produce, and I'm sitting around here and can't get a deal. I just hope that all this turns around for me so I can get back to doing the music I love. It's killing me. It's taking me out not doing it. Okay? So at the end of the day, and I talked about this earlier when, when everything was on the table. Lil Rod, your career is over, sir. I hate to say it. Um, Keep working with T-Pain. And, you know, you might be able to produce, maybe. Because there is going to be some people out there that actually care about your situation, right? And I don't say that to be facetious or anything. I mean, that actually care, like that will actually respect the fact of, yo, he's had a hard time. He deserves a chance. I think somebody who determines themselves to be a Christian may come out and give you a shot. You might have to go back to producing for some of them gospel artists to get your re-entry into the game. That might have to be an option for you. Um, it might not be the, you know, most glamorous option. But it might be the option nonetheless. But for the most part, based on what you've revealed about yourself, right, where you allowed yourself to be, you know, touched in numerous amounts of ways by other men. Unfortunately, there's a lot of men in the industry that's not going to allow themselves to come around you and work freely, right? There's those people. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying it is what it is. Based on the fact that the subject of your lawsuit is Diddy and there's a lot of people in the backs in the backgrounds who will never come out and admit that they still fuck with him, that they're still doing business with him, or that they're still planning to do business with him if Diddy comes out um, unscathed from this situation. There's a lot of people that are silent supporters of what he has going on. So I don't know how many major artists are going to be willing to work with you 
based on those things. I think you should put your album out independently. I think you could find an independent distributor that would be willing to work with you. Maybe not like Sony. Um, you know, you might not be able to go to the orchard or something, but somebody out there will be willing to put a bag in your pocket because you did come off of the, the love project. I think people just want to make sure that you're not lying first. I think people want to make sure that, um, there's some sort of checks and balances that come out from court that indicate you are telling the truth. So let me not say that your career is over, but your career is definitely on hold. Um, you might want to consider getting with ladies instead of male artists, right? Because a lot of ladies out here, I'm not calling you gay, but a lot of ladies out here are pretty open to working with gay men anyway. You would probably feel a little bit more respected in the studio because they're not going to be looking at you as crazy about, you know, some of the things that may have took place. Um, so that's that's an option. Um, I don't know. You're in a, you're in a tough spot, bro. So. Just got to just got to stay down, but I definitely think. Put this album out independently. See if you can run it up, you know, do some numbers, do something. Not When I say numbers, I definitely don't mean like like you're going to compete with mainstream mainstream acts. But just see what you can do. And maybe by the time you do the next project, you may be able to gain a little bit of support. But you're not going to get it by just being defeated. You're not going to get anywhere. You got to put the work in. Which is probably why he came out and did this interview. So that he can allow people to know what's going on. And a lot of it was centered around his interest in re-entering the industry. So maybe somebody gives you a shot. Somebody might give you one shot. Don't fuck it up. Let me know what y'all think about this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. I will catch y'all on the next one. Peace. Yeah. King of my city in cul de sac. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my shit. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. Yeah. I was ready for years and they doubted me. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross them out and came back with some battery Stand for my honor, but you run no corner Packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble I done came too far to be humble